A new year means we have cycled back around to Ephemera 1 Divine Codes. In update 7.1, we have a new batch of common manuals to buy. Let's go over what's on offer and what's worth grabbing. For the 5 star manuals that cost 300 Ephemera 1 each, we start with Plegian Darja. She's an instant pickup for basically everyone because Darja comes with Swiss Sparrow 3 and Speedrun's Rain 3. Swiss Sparrow 3 has been power crept for quite a while now, although for range units, it was still the most consistent attack and speed booster for player phase. Well, with the recent banner, they introduced Remote Sparrow, which grants plus one more attack and you get 30% damage reduction. I don't really think any unit wouldn't want that. Still, Swiss Sparrow 3 is still good, and it only takes one inheritance slot since you can get Swiss Sparrow 2 from Luthier and various Heroic Grail units. If you have a flying offensive mage or dragon, then this is worth doing because then it lets you pick up Speed and Res Rain 3 at the same time. Minus 4 Speed and Res Devils, and it can set you up to get to the hold variant upgrade if you want. Darja is amazing if you have a flying magical damage dealer and you want to initiate with them. Now, for her weapon, Darja has the Pledgen Torch Plus. If you are solo, inflict minus 5 attack and res on the foe and double any attack and res debuffs in combat. The Pledgen slash Vulture weapons have been appearing on free to play friendly units, but not the Pledgen Torch slash Green Vulture Tome. Both are only on 5 star units. If you really want them, then Darja is going to be it. You can get it with Swiss Sparrow 3 at the same time. Even if you don't have a major flyer, Swiss Sparrow 3 by itself is definitely worth taking. You can use it on pretty much any unit. Next 5 star manual is near Soki. Interesting set of skills, maybe not for everyone. That's an odd thing to say when Soki has a distant counter skill, except she has distant ward. You get plus 5 attack and res and distant counter, but only against magical damage dealing foes. That means dragons, mages, and healers. This isn't a bad skill because DC is always fun, but generally most units rather just want to counter daggers and archers too. This is why most people replace distant ward on Brave Edelgard because she's totally fine fighting anyone. Distant Ward is further pushed aside because of the newer DC variants like Distant Stance. That gives you plus 5 res and full Distant Counter capabilities. One good thing with Distant Ward is that it does not require base DC to inherit. That means you can pick it up with Sabotage Speed 3 or Odd Res Wave 3. Not exactly the two most enticing skills. Sabotage Speed was rare, but we also recently had Yuen as an Ephemera with it, and it's on Nina in the demo pool now. Maybe you can give it to Kadan Soren if you want a Sabotage debuff. As for Odd Res Wave, their day in the spotlight has come and gone. We have better and more consistent buffing C skills that are available. Perhaps they could get tier 4 upgrades, but we'll see. Pick up Soki if you want Distant Ward, it's still a fun partial DC skill. Moving on to the 4 star con manuals, we have our returning Tempest Trials unit, Summer Seth. Seth has some very viable skills, so 100 Ephemera is a steal. At 4 stars, Seth has Rally Up Speed. It's not the plus version, but we do not see Rally Up variants really at all. The base version is still interesting since you can buff multiple allies with plus 4 speed. The other skill Seth has is Defense Tactic 3, not super rare, it's on Mustafa and other hero ground units. At 5 stars, Seth has Speed and Defense Catch 3. Pretty decent A skill since it does not have positioning requirements. It's not the most common stat variant and there is only one tier 4 holder, but a catch 3 is still valuable. Finally, we have the Seahorse Axe Plus. If unit initiates combat or is near 2 allies, you get plus 5 attack and defense and a free follow up attack. Despite the arcane downfall axe existing, Seahorse Axe still stands out as a top tier inheritable. That free follow up attack carries a lot of weight for slow and fast units. No quicker post for slow users, and fast units like Seth himself can use the free follow up to cancel out follow up denial. Great for offense and defensive builds, the Seahorse Axe is great. At least until another arcane axe knocks it off. Until that day, though, it has a place. The most recent demo, well, from slightly over a year ago, is Karen. At 4 stars, she has Moonbow and Attack and Demons Form 3. That specific form is on a couple of her grow units if you did want another way to get it. At 5 stars, Karen has Drive Attack 2. Echidna has it at 4 stars if you have her. For her weapon, the Adelaide Lance Plus grants plus 4 attack and defense to allies within 2 spaces, and it grants the same stat boost to the user if they're near allies as well. Basically, it's just Joint Drive Attack and Joint Drive Defense combined. Mostly a support based lance if you want to buff nearby units. Moving on, we have Merlinus, our convoy meme unit. Skill wise, he's alright though, because you still got the ever potent reposition, which you can never have enough of. At 4 stars, Merlinus also has Wings of Mercy 3 for those that don't have many canes. At 5 stars, you can get Distant Guard 3, but a couple of her girl units have it at 4 star rarity. As for his weapon, Merlinus has the old Smoke Dagger Plus, which inflicts minus 6 to all stats on the foe and nearby foes after combat. However, it does nothing in combat. Next up, Python. At 4 stars, you can get Moonbow and Blue Tone Breaker 3. With Engage focusing so much on its new break mechanic, maybe we could see some updated breaker skills in Fae. 
Now at five stars, Python's gonna have Steady Blow 2. Easiest way to get this skill, although it's not the most commonly used. For his weapon, Python has the Short Bow Plus, which grants plus 10 damage on special trigger. Python does have some rare skills, but they aren't really that useful in the modern age. Last up, Kagero at four stars has Reprisal and Dagger Breaker 3. She's the only unit with Dagger Breaker, but it doesn't even work on colored daggers since those did not exist at the time. Honestly, if they ever update these skills, they have to consolidate all the colored versions or change breakers to specifically only work on red, blue, and green colors. Maybe throw in colorless too. For example, the feud skills kind of already do this. Now at five stars, Kagero has Warding Blow 3 if you want it. Not really that great. Then for her weapon, the OG Poison Dagger Plus, effective against infantry units with a staggering five might. Who needs legendary Shez needing to win a 20 speed check? Well, you know, ignoring that Shez also gets brave attacks and extra cooldown. To be fair, we have triangle attack and dual strike, so you know, maybe it could work with a godly amount of extra attack. That'll be it for this month's Ephemeral 1 combat manuals. Most people should probably get Tharja, and even if Selkie's Distant Ward isn't the top DC skill, it's still Distant Counter in some form. Summer Seth is also quite valuable in terms of fodder. You never know when those skills will become more available. Once I get the Ephemera, I will plus 10 my own Summer Seth though. We got a busy month with Engage coming out, but don't forget to participate in Fey events. Grab those Ephemera and comment manuals. Thank you for watching, and next video I'll be rounding up the news from the past week for Fire Emblem Engage. See you then.